Happy Monday, Fox Nut Earth. Hope you had a great holiday weekend. It is Monday, July 7th, 2014. I'm Dan Rubin. This is the Fox Nuts Morning 5. As we talked about Dave Biddle's Siesta Vacation 2014 Palooza continues, so you've got me all week again. Today I'm joined by Alex Gleitman, recruiting expert extraordinaire for Bucknuts, and we're going to kind of take a look at the three storylines facing Ohio State as we start the week here. The recruitment of Cleveland Benedictine's Jerome Baker, who will commit on July 11th. The opening, the fantastic all-star scenario out in Beaverton, Oregon, which features multiple Buckeyes. We'll touch on that. And then a little bit about the unfortunate Tracy Sprinkle situation off the field. First of all, Alex, welcome. Hope you had a great holiday weekend. Thanks, Dan. Hope everyone on Bucknuts did as well. It was nice and relaxing out here in uh, New York, New Jersey area. Definitely difficult to get started on the Monday after July 4th. We've discussed that off the air. But look, let's talk about Jerome Baker. Um, has not been the number one discussion on the recruiting front because of the crazy week that we just had with Justin Hilliard and Deshaun Cornell. But Baker has been a prime target for the Buckeyes throughout. He is announcing on July 11th. His crystal ball is... You know, very, very scarlet and gray, but there has been the addition of another team in there, and it's one that's been kind of sneaking, I don't even say sneaking up, but, but been a player throughout this recruitment and has everyone thinking, kind of bring us up to speed on that. Yeah, well, with Jerome Baker for a long time, Ohio State has been a heavy favorite. Uh, I crystal balled him last, uh, I think it was last May or April. Uh, so that long ago, Ohio State has been seen as a favorite. It's the childhood favorite. Uh, it's the family's choice, I think if they were the ones to make the pick. But uh, for a long time, the Florida Gators, Will Muschamp, and linebacker coach and defensive coordinator D.J. Durkin and Ohio Native have done a great job recruiting Jerome. They got him down for a visit earlier this spring and really did a nice job um, selling him on the program, the depth chart, and building that relationship, as I said, which tends to be the most important thing uh, in recruiting battles. Uh, that being said, my crystal ball sticks with Ohio State, but there's a lot of smoke out there for Florida this week. I know there's a little bit of concern inside the Woody Hayes Athletic, the Woody Hayes Athletic Center, and neither school, uh, Ohio State or Florida, are definitively sure which uh, program Baker will choose on Friday. Uh, Florida is very confident. Ohio State still remains confident. But as I said, there's definitely some uh, uneasiness within the Woody Hayes show. So I think Florida is certainly a very realistic option uh, for Jerome Baker, who's you know the number 53 prospect in the nation and can play either linebacker or running back at the next level. So he's definitely an excellent get. But at the end of the day, I think everything adds up logically for Ohio State. We'll see how things ride the next couple of days, but my pick remains with the Buckeyes for now. Yeah, I agree. Well, you know, one of the things that stuck out to me about Justin Hilliard's uh, announcement ceremony was that it was Ohio State the whole time, and he was just looking for someone else to could possibly knock them off the perch, and he did a good job of of kind of hiding that, um, especially down the stretch. So I'm hoping it's the same thing with Baker. I really do think it is. Okay, the opening, we, we touched on it earlier, and speaking of Justin Hilliard, he'll be out there. It's a collection of the finest class of 2015 prospects in the country. Last year dominated by the Buckeyes in terms of numbers. I think they had eight or nine guys there this year. Only three Buckeyes currently committed will be there. Deshaun Cornell, Justin Hilliard, and Tyler Green, the safety out of the D.C. area, DeMatha High. But there are a bunch of targets there. Josh Sweat, Matthew Burrell, a couple others. Who do you rank as your number one target that uh, Hilliard and Cornell and Green should be putting in work on? Well, that's a tough question because you got Damian Harris and Matthew Burrell out there who I think are Ohio State leans right now. And you know that uh, Hilliard and Cornell and Green are certainly going to be working those guys to kind of push them over the edge and maybe try to get a commitment from them in July. But I think the guy that both Cornell and Hilliard have mentioned consistently is wanting to go after while out in Oregon is Josh Sweat, the defensive end from Virginia. He recently had a very good visit to Ohio State. He's talking about if he takes official visits, that one will be to Columbus. So obviously Ohio State um, made a good first impression. I'm not sure it's good enough right now. Uh, Virginia Tech and Georgia are two schools consistently mentioned at the top for sweat. Florida State, Clemson, a couple others are in that mix as well. And I think Ohio State is in kind of that secondary group right now. So I think Hilliard and Cornell are going to be working pretty hard 
uh, to push Ohio State more into that top group for sweat and ensure that an official visit happens for a prospect who's going to have to decide by January as he's enrolling early at the school of his choice. Keep it locked to Buck Nuts here. Alex will have a full primer on the opening coming up here in a little over an hour around the 10 a.m. area, and then we'll have complete coverage from 24-7 Sports. There's more than 10 guys from the network out there covering it. We'll have everything covered from top to bottom. Make sure to have it locked into Bucknuts for your coverage of the opening throughout the week. What they have going on right now is the Elite 11, and that will bleed into later on in the week the position players getting it on. All right, Alex, so the last topic we're going to discuss here is a little bit unfortunate. Tracy Sprinkle, bitten by the off-season uh, monster, as it were, apparently arrested at a party and some other stuff that went down there. We're not even t- entirely sure. It's been reported several different ways. What are you hearing, and uh, if you had to predict an outcome for this right now, how where would you go with it? Yeah, I mean, I, I think everyone's in wait-and-see mode right now. It, it's really hard. There's been a ton of reports, um, you know, some have been retracted and then and then restated. So I think it's really kind of wait and see mode. Uh, we know there was uh, some sort of bar fight. Um, we know that there was uh, you know and a, a charge um, you know after finding uh, drugs in a vehicle. There's obviously been some questions about what what drugs those were exactly, and and we don't want to speculate anything until the full details are out on the table. But I, what I will say is that I see this as, as going down in three possible scenarios. The first is. Sprinkles charged, found guilty, no question. He's done from Ohio State and has a lot more to worry about than just that, as he'll probably uh, be facing some jail time. Uh, The second scenario I see is that he's charged, um, and while he's charged, he's definitely suspended indefinitely from Ohio State. Um, You know how these legal things can go. They they could take a while and drag out. So I could see him being suspended indefinitely, and if found innocent um, at that point, uh, you know, then they'll deal with – you know, seeing how long that suspension lasted and if it merits any further suspension or if he'll be reinstated immediately. The third, and and I think at least likely scenario at that point, at this point uh, in time, is that uh, all charges are dropped. Uh, Sprinkle is just in the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong people. And um, I think then you would see in that scenario a suspension of maybe three games, uh, similar to what Carlos Hyde uh, saw last year when his case, when his charges were dropped against him in that case. Definitely an unfortunate situation. It seems like this is something most programs go through at least once or twice every off season, which is a darn shame. But these are kids, and we are going to wait to see what exactly happened or when all the facts come out before we pass judgment here. We appreciate Alex joining us today on the Bucknuts Morning 5. Plus, right, as we said, keep an eye out for his opening primer coming up here in a little bit. We'll also have a story from Steve Hellwagon on Carlton Bragg, the highly touted basketball player out of Cleveland, who the Buckeyes are recruiting. The boarding house coming up later today in a full week on Buckner. Keep it locked in, Buckner.